In this video, we're going to look at making sodium nitrite. Again, I've done a couple of videos already on making it not using this process because this time we're going to use calcium sulfite, which was made in a previous video. Since I've covered this before, I'm going to go through this quickly. The information, sodium nitrite can't be purchased in its pure form anymore, at least in the United States. Its number one use is to keep your meat pink or red. It can be used in making nitrous, which I've done before in a previous video. It's both an oxidizer, but much more often used as a reducer. It's very soluble in water. 84.52 grams per 100 milliliters at 20 degrees is quite, quite soluble. It has a melting point of 271 degrees Celsius or 520 degrees Fahrenheit. It's also used to treat cyanide poisoning, which is a little confusing because I don't know many people who would take cyanide and then end up making it for treatment, unless you're taking the slow release form. Ha ha. Anyways, apparently, it does work for cyanide poisoning. The materials we're going to be using are calcium sulfite, again, done in a previous video, 60 grams, sodium nitrate, 42 and a half grams, and a heat source. We can either use an oven that will reach 230 degrees Celsius, which is 446 degrees Fahrenheit, or if we have a really good oven that reaches 300 degrees Celsius, which is 572 degrees Fahrenheit. And the only difference between these two is that the time you leave the uh, mix in them. This needs to be evenly heated. So we're going to do it in a beaker and you have to evenly heat it. So a hot plate will not work for this unless you built some kind of mechanism where it could be on a spigot and you were able to turn it evenly over the hot plate like this. And then you probably could do it. But barring that, I'm going to be using an oven. The reaction is really straightforward. Calcium sulfite plus sodium nitrate and the heat, which we discussed, will give you calcium sulfate, which is basically plaster of Paris and sodium nitrite, which is what we're looking to get. So the calcium sulfite is oxidized and the sodium nitrate is reduced in this reaction. In our methods, we're gonna put the calcium sulfite and the sodium nitrate into a grinder. This is gonna be a coffee grinder I'm using. Grind them really thoroughly and really well because there's not gonna be any liquids used. These will only react if they're in close proximity to one another while the heat's being applied. So not only do you want fine products here once you grind them up, but you want them to be really, really mixed well, which both happen when you use a coffee grinder. Once they're ground finely, we're going to take them and put them inside the beaker I was talking about earlier. And I'm going to put it inside of a toaster oven because most of the time toaster ovens actually heat up slightly higher than a regular oven will. I'm going to put it in uh, for 40 minutes at 446 degrees Fahrenheit, during which time this reaction is going to be taking place. Once the mix is done getting heated, we're going to take it out, let the beaker cool, and then we're going to put all of the contents into a, a funnel here with filter paper. And that's the first thing we're going to do. The second thing is we're going to run distilled water over it, which will dissolve the sodium nitrite. And of course, it will end up in the uh, fluid down here, the liquid mixed with water. There will be some sodium nitrate, most likely, because the conversion is very hard to get at 100%. So, but most of this will be sodium nitrite. Once you have that in your flask, then you take your flask, dump it out into what I'm going to be using as a Pyrex glass pan, heat it to evaporate all of the water, which will leave the crystals behind. We then scrape them out of there, I'll weigh them, and also I plan on testing this just to make sure that we have sodium nitrite. That's it. As far as talking about this, let's go make our sodium nitrite again. 60 grams of calcium sulfite tetrahydrate made in a previous video, pre-weighed. 42 and a half grams of sodium nitrate, pre-weighed. As the sodium nitrate tends to come in pearls like this, I'm gonna put this in first all by itself into the grinder and grind it up just for a second or two. And then while well, the calcium sulfite. All right. It's pretty full there. I think it still can do it. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna wait for it to settle for a bit before we turn the thing upside down. It's been about 15 minutes here, so, oh gosh, that did get warm, but I think it worked well. Nice. I'm gonna now transfer the mix into a beaker that I will be using to heat it in. Oh, 
Oh, we're losing a little bit here and there, but I'm sure that's in micrograms, so it's not a big deal. Plus, the mix is what's most important. Finally done. I'm outside here with my toaster oven. Two hundred thirty degrees Celsius is four hundred forty-six degrees Fahrenheit, as I mentioned, and this goes up to four fifty, so that is really good. Four degrees above, but I don't think that's going to make a difference. And we'll start our timer. Time is up. Turn this down all the way, of course, and now. Just a matter of waiting for it to cool. It's cooled down enough, I can pick it up with these gloves. I'm gonna take it inside, and we'll take a look at it closer and go on to the next step. Back inside here, and this is uh, different. Uh, it's lighter, it's like, I, it's hard to explain. It's like flour now. It's super fluffy, and it's like bleach white. It was white before, but it's even whiter. I don't know how to explain that, but and it probably doesn't come through on the camera. But those are the changes. So I'm gonna move it now over into this uh, filter paper here where we're going to run some distilled water through it so we can wash all of the sodium nitrite out of it. Now okay. I'm just leveling off the top, trying to make the water go through there as evenly as possible. And I'm not going to hold myself to just a certain amount of distilled water. It just means we have to evaporate more in the end, but my interest here is getting all of the sodium nitrite out of here as possible. Meaning it might take quite a bit of soaking. I don't know how many times I'll do this, but I'll continue to do it until it looks like it's done. It's still dripping, but very, very slowly. So I'm going to call it uh, quits here, but I'm going to show you something here in a sec. The coffee filter paper wasn't working well enough. So some of the fine particles got through. It's got to be either some residual calcium sulfite or newly formed calcium sulfate that's in there. So I'm going to redo this and filter it one more time using a finer filter paper. I have a much finer filter paper on the left here. So I'm just going to take this off here. If any still drips through, it can happen and I'll filter that later. But for now, we're going to take this and hopefully get rid of all that tiny sediment in there. It's not going to be quick either. So I'll be back when the whole thing's done. Just the last bit going in here. You can't see it through the camera well, but the liquid on the bottom right here is extremely clear. All right, when that's done, we'll pour it into a, a wide dish and start to evaporate it. It's still dripping through, but you can clearly see a difference. There's no sediment in there whatsoever. We're at the last step here. I'm just going to pour this in here, dehydrate it, scrape out the crystals, and we're done. Once this cools, I'll scrape it out, we'll weigh it, and then we'll test it for nitrites. I really don't know how hard this will be to get out. Some of these are just so difficult, but this isn't actually that bad. Nope, not bad at all. Okay. I'll be working on this and I'll be back. All right, I'm done. We got a pretty good yield here. I don't know how many grams, of course. I haven't weighed it yet, but there we go. I'll put that into a container, a beaker, and then we'll weigh it. My new favorite way to weigh things is just uh, manage to get them inside of this funnel. We have a weight of 30.77 grams of sodium nitrite. And next we're going to test it. The last thing we have to do here is test our sodium nitrite to make sure it's actually a nitrite. So I want to go over this equation here. I'm going to be using uh, potassium iodide uh, primarily. So we're going to dissolve some of the sodium nitrite in water. And then we're going to add a small amount of um, sulfuric acid, it's dilute, uh, to add the hydrogens, and then the potassium iodide. So the sodium nitrite will act as a reducing agent, and it will release the I2 from the potassium iodide right here. The I2 will be pretty much invisible until we add our starch solution, in which case it will become visible, and you'll see it go from a clear solution to kind of a reddish-brown, purplish-brown uh, color. 
I have a test tube here that we'll be using and it's going to put some of our sodium nitrate in here. Just a couple of scoops so is all it'll take. Well, let's make it three since that second one was kind of on the wimpy side. All right, now I'm just going to add some distilled water to it. Shake it around, dissolve it really good. Okay, you can see it's dissolved. There's no particles left in there. All right. So we need about three drops of our 10% sulfuric acid solution here to acidify it. Okay, there you go. Now I'm gonna add the same thing, three drops of our potassium iodide solution. This is uh, two grams of potassium iodide that was dissolved in 50 milliliters, but I saved some of it, so there's only like 20 left there. All right, so we're adding our potassium iodide here. And lastly, to show the iodine, the free iodine that occurred because the nitrate was present. present. This is cornstarch just mixed in water. And there you go. I would say that's definitely a positive test there. All right, cool. Thanks for watching.